Welcome to the MDU's podcast. Today, we're talking with Professor Ashok Hander, Associate Professor of Surgery and Director of Surgical Education at Oxford University, and a consultant vascular surgeon at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. He also sits on the MDU's Cases Committee and joins us today to discuss some common questions around acute limb ischemia and its diagnosis, the potential medico-legal issues involved, and what doctors can do to minimise the risks to both themselves and to patients that can come about as a result. Professor Hander, why is it important to recognise the difference between acute limb ischemia and critical limb ischemia? It's really important to recognise the difference because in acute limb ischemia you often only have up to six hours before the limb is irrevocably or irreversibly uh, damaged and hence dead. And so if you want to have a way of saving limbs you have to act fast and so the differentiation between acute and critical or chronic limb ischemia is crucially important. How do you recognise acute limb ischemia? So the key in recognition is really, uh, like much of medicine, it's all in the history. Uh, And essentially, it is the fact that it's a sudden onset of the stuff that all of you will have probably been taught in medical school many years ago, the six Ps. That's pain, paresthesia, and by that we mean numbness or altered sensation, perishingly cold, but actually it could just be cold. Uh, paralysis may just mean a change in the power, pale, either to the patient in their history or often more importantly on examination, and then finally pulselessness, which is really on examination. So the key thing really is that if any of these symptoms are present but have a sudden onset, then you need to have a high index of suspicion that this could be acute limb ischemia and if this is a patient phone call for triage for example it's usually the case that this patient should be seen urgently uh, on the basis that you may only have six hours to save the limb. Are these signs and symptoms that you mentioned always present? So here's the difficulty with acute limb ischemia which is why it is easy to miss because not all of these Uh, symptoms have to be present all of the time and in fact it's not infrequent that only two out of the six are present at the initial presentation so it's really about listening carefully to the patient or the person phoning about the patient's history to say if they have any of these you really need to see the patient and take a careful history personally so it's a face-to-face consultation that's important and if in doubt always receive the patient or if you're in a position where they need to be referred, then always refer the patient into secondary care if needed. How quickly should patients be referred? And how important are the timescales we're talking about here? Timing is crucial, and these patients are often unwell. And to bear in mind, at the back of your mind, across the UK, the outcomes from acute limb ischemia are that around 40% of patients will have limb loss and 20% will have uh, death within 30 days. So these are often unwell patients. But equally, they could be quite well patients who have a sudden history of either short distance claudication, i.e. pain, or the pulselessness, or just of the leg having gone pale or white or numb and then having recovered. That's not unusual. And so it's about an index of suspicion and the timing is important. So those patients should be seen either promptly or if we are going to refer them into secondary care, then a blue light uh, time critical transfer by ambulance on the basis that the earlier they get assessed by a specialist, the quicker they'll have to have treatment, definitive treatment, and hence uh, optimal chance of limb salvage. Which patients or groups of patients are most at risk? As far as the types of patients who are uh, at high risk are patients either who have previous history of claudication or any of the risk factors for atherosclerosis. So patients with diabetes, patients with hypertension, patients with high cholesterol, patients who have smokers or patients who have a family history of cardiovascular disease. But certainly, if a patient has at least two or three of those risk factors, then your index of suspicion should be even higher that they've got acute limb ischemia from established arterial disease. What other conditions might give similar symptoms that could confuse a diagnosis? 
So the sorts of things that acute limb ischemia can be confused with are chronic or critical limb ischemia. So the definition of critical limb ischemia is either a patient who has rest pain for more than two weeks, which is not resolved by simple analgesia, or they have any form of tissue necrosis, so ulceration or gangrene. So those would be chronic or critical limb ischemia. And if a patient has a, a sudden onset or new symptoms, then it must be considered that they have acute limb ischemia and those patients should be referred up urgently that day to the on-call vascular team at your local hospital or to the emergency department or if this is a patient within a secondary care facility to the on-call vascular team. Uh, those patients who have critical limb ischemia uh, are ones who can be referred up uh, either as an urgent referral within the week, they really ought to be seen within a week, rather than a routine appointment through Choose and Book. Professor Hander, what can you tell us of the incidence and prevalence of acute limb ischemia and what are some of the common factors in complaints and claims featuring the condition? Acute limb ischemia is important because it's a surgical emergency and treated, recognised and treated promptly, uh, we will have limb salvage. Uh, clearly limb loss is a major devastating thing to happen to anybody uh, and both psychologically but physically and a huge burden to them, their family and carers uh, and to the health service overall. Uh, overall in the UK we have around six and a half thousand cases a year uh, and the important thing about it is that around 40% will end up with limb loss, 20% uh, will have in-hospital death, uh, and yet prompt treatment may well uh, give you much better outcomes uh, than that. So the recognition is clearly important. The other issue is that it is a constant source of litigation, uh, and within the Medical Defence Union, we see a large number of cases uh, from this each year uh, where there's been a failure to recognise or a failure to act promptly with acute limb ischemia. The recognition is crucial uh, in the history taking and examination and prompt action uh, will save limbs. So in summary, with acute limb ischemia, the key is to have a high index of suspicion. And if a patient gives a history of any of the six Ps, pain, paresthesia, perishingly cold, paralysis, paleness or on examination is pulseless, then a diagnosis of acute limb ischemia should be considered. The key is to make sure that patient is seen face to face with a direct history from the patient and if you're suspicious of acute limb ischemia, always refer the patient urgently for a vascular opinion. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like more information on guidance and advice, please visit themdu.com or download our app from Google Play or the App Store. And thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.